I'd like to speak to us this morning from the theme, what a year, what a year. Our text is from the book of Isaiah, chapter six, verse one and verses seven and eight, where we find these words. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. The seraph touched my mouth and it said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. What a year, what a year. This passage from Isaiah today is one of the classics, not just of biblical literature, but of all literature. The call of a prophet was a major event in the life of the Hebrew people. The prophet was a powerful figure who spoke truth to the power of a king, to the power of a high priest or a general of the army. Spoke truth to the power of the people as well. In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah had a vision of God. And that vision was his call to the office of prophet. Now, what was it about the death of Uzziah that called Isaiah into this peculiar role? Well, when a king dies, especially one like Uzziah, that had ruled very well for a very long time. It creates a crisis in the nation. It causes the whole people to recalibrate their society. I mean, we know what has happened in our country when a president was assassinated how it shook the whole nation, how we didn't know what was gonna happen next, how we were thrown into disarray. The death of a king or a queen or a president in office disorients the whole nation. After a long time of a good reign, prosperity and peace for the nation, King Uzziah died. And that death shook Isaiah. He had a vision of God, and that vision was his way of understanding his call to the office of prophet. Isaiah understood his call to be a guide to the people and to guide the people according to the justice of God. Isaiah is that prophet, as all of them were, that gave us the clear connection between social justice and the will of God. He could not be more clear in his preaching that the corruption of the bureaucracy from the courts of justice to the courts of the king, riddled with lies and bribes. Isaiah preached that the abuse and exploitation and oppression of the poor, the widow, and children were the root cause of God's displeasure. 
That's what Isaiah was preaching 2,000 years ago in Israel and in Jerusalem. And God still calls us today to cease our greed, to cease our corruption, to stop the lies, to stop the abuse and oppression of children, of single mothers, of widows, of the poor. This is what displeases God. And if we are to get right with God, then we need to listen to our prophets. And we thank God that God still sends prophets to God's people. So Isaiah rose up as a prophet in ancient Israel. Now that the good king had died, Isaiah stepped up to fill the void and fill the void with the word of the justice of God. What a year that was for Isaiah and the people of Jerusalem, the year that King Uzziah died. What a year it has been for us. This week passed marks the one year anniversary of the death of George Floyd. And the same question confronts us as did Isaiah. How shall I put it? In the year that George Floyd died, what do we see? What did we hear? What will we do? Will we step up like Isaiah? and raise our prophetic voices in the name of the justice of God? Or will we step off and step away? What a year it has been for us. This week was also another mass shooting in San Jose, killing nine people and the gunman. Too often we disregard every life. I know we don't approve at all of what the gunman has done, but the gunman was still a human being and lost his life, took his own life, killed nine of his co-workers and then killed himself. When we talk about gun violence, 40 thousand people died last year in just the United States from gun violence. Almost half of those, almost 20,000 died by self-inflicted wounds, mostly by suicide. They count their deaths count. How many of them would have been alive if they didn't have access to guns? Suicide is a mental illness. And we should not disregard their deaths because it was suicide. It's a tragic loss, aided and abetted by the easy access to guns that we have in this country, like no other country on the planet, which is why our gun deaths are higher by a factor of 10 than any other nation on the planet. 40,000 deaths in the year that people, 40,000 people died from gun violence. What did we see? What did we hear? What will we do? What a year this has been for us. The 63 weeks that we've suffered this pandemic, almost 600,000 people have died from COVID-19 in the United States. What will we do in the year 
that 600,000 people died. Will we step up and raise our prophetic voices to encourage people to live healthy lives, to wear masks, to get inoculated, to preserve our lives and our way of life? What a year this has been for us. The question of us is the same as it was for Isaiah. Have these deaths clarified the call of God on your life? Help you to see what God wants you to do about the year that we face in light of the year past? Think of your own life. Maybe you experienced a life-altering death. Maybe not this year, but, but you can remember. You can remember in the year that grandfather died, in the year that grandmother died, in the year that my daddy died, in the year that my mama died, in the year that my husband died, in the year that my wife died in the year that my marriage died, in the year that my child died, in the year that my best friend died, and on this Memorial Day, in the year that my soldier, my sailor, my Marine, my Coast Guardsman died. These are life altering deaths that may have caused us to see more clearly our own lives and our own world. May have caused us to see more clearly what God wants of us. May have allowed us to see more clearly what God wants for us. On this centennial of the massacre in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where what was then known as Black Wall Street was wiped out by a racist white mob using guns and bombs dropped from airplanes because they resented the success and the growing wealth of the black community in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That massacre is part of our history that is just now being told to this nation. So in the year that Black Wall Street died, what did we see? What did we hear? In this year that we have seen so much death from a disease that could have been prevented with a paper mask. In this year that we have seen so much death from shootings that could have been prevented if we would enforce the laws we have and pass common sense gun laws that keep weapons out of the hands of known violent men who beat their intimate partners, out of the hands of folks who are mentally ill, out of the hands who the Homeland Security stops and questions because they have terrorist information with them. In this year where we have red flag laws, if we could finally give up our addiction to guns and violence, we could change the world. In this year that we saw our democracy almost die, in this year, Uzziahs are dying all over the place. The question to us is the same as it was to Isaiah, who will go for God? 
Who will cry out for justice? Who will go for God? Who will cry out for the unaccompanied children at our border? Who will go for God and soften the hearts of the greedy billionaires that hoard the money that they have and leave the bottom two thirds to wonder where their next meal is coming from? Who will go for God? Who will cry out for justice? Death has a way of clarifying things. We see now more clearly than ever that we need the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. His death clarified for this nation the abuse of unarmed black people by the police like never before. Not that it wasn't happening before, but it clarified your vision to see it. We see that we need to do all that we can to replace the current culture of corruption and abuse and, and excessive use of force with a culture of the rule of law, a culture of de-escalation, and one that strips officers of immunity when they commit a crime just like any other criminal. Just like in the time of Isaiah, it was up to him to answer God's call. God has no hands but our hands. God has no feet but our feet. God sat there in the sanctuary and wondered aloud, who will go for us? God will not do for us what we can do. God will not do for us what we ought to do. So listen for that voice calling you to go for God. And when you hear who will go for us, simply answer, here am I. Send me. Send me to City Hall. Send me to the county seat. Send me to Sacramento. Send me to Washington, D.C. Now, some of us may feel like Isaiah, that who are we to go and speak truth to power? Who are we? We are people of unclean lips, meaning that Isaiah understood that he was a human being, frail and weak and corrupt and subject to all the frailties that human beings have. But he could not let that stop him. And so the seraph came and put the hot coals to his mouth to purge his sin and to make him able to go for God. Now I know that that hot coal didn't feel too good on his lips. And we've got some hot coals in this country that we need to have put to our mouths. Yes, we need a Truth and Reconciliation Commission in the United States. Oh, it won't feel good to our lips, but that's what we need. That's what we need. We have to look the truth in the eye and tell the truth. It won't be, need, it won't be easy and it won't feel good, but that's the hot coal that we must touch before we can go for God. And finally, why are we here today, gathered in this place that we call Pilgrim United Church of Christ, in this season of Pentecost? We are here today because in the year that Jesus died, the church had a vision and heard a voice, and that ragtag remnant of disciples came together in the year that Jesus died and became the body of Christ to continue the work that Jesus started, the work of love, the work of reconciliation, the work of forgiveness that sets people free to start again and build a better life for themselves and for their families and for all of us 
that we might build a better world. So open your eyes and open your ears. God is calling you. Won't you answer? Here am I. Send me. God bless you. Amen. Now the band of pilgrims will sing our closing song. Everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season turn, turn, turn. And of time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to kill, a time.